Let fate toy with you before you die like a fool. Megami was warned of his tragic fate back in chapter 173, and it has come to reality. After more than 200 chapters, the biggest reveal in Jujutsu Kaisen history has dropped. Yes! Yes! Sukuna has finally made his move at the most unexpected time and has taken over Megami's body. No! 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 Yes, the moment we all fear the most is here. But instead of Yuji on the death cross, it's Megami who will have to be killed by none other than Satoru Gojo. What's even worse is that Megami's sister Sumiki turned out to be the vessel for an evil incarnated sorcerer who wants to fight Sukuna, ruining all of their plans. And Sukuna will unleash hell just like he did in Shibuya, which in effect helps Kenjaku plan as killing the soldiers and sorcerers in the colonies will increase curse energy and the merger he is doing. This all will result in Satoru Gojo losing his life as a martyr, changing the entire world of Jujutsu. No way! From the very beginning, Sukuna had expressed a deep interest in Megami and his curse technique. In their first fight at the detention center, Sukuna had already assessed Megami's potential with the Zenin clan's inherited technique called the Ten Shadows. However, at this time, Megami's mindset was not ideal for a sorcerer as Gojo taught him. His first instinct whilst facing a tough opponent was to rely on his ace card, Maharaga, that would kill him but was sure to take down his opponent. He was acting like a sacrificial pawn, thinking that it's okay to win even at the cost of his life. Thus, Megami was holding back on his insane potential that led even Sukuna to call him a wasted treasure. Funnily enough, Sukuna with two fingers would have died if Megami had actually acted on his decision at the time. But in the Shibuya incident, 15 fingers Sukuna no diffed Maharaga, the strongest Shikigami of the Ten Shadows, defeating it. During that battle, Sukuna went out of his way to save Megami who was bleeding to death. But he healed him stating, don't die, there's something I need you to do. Sukuna had shown his appreciation for Megami's domain expansion in chapter 58, which was Megami's first time using it despite being incomplete, only for him to perfect it even further during the culling games, now for Sukuna's benefit. All of this was enough to sound alarm bells in Yuji Itadori's mind, as he wanted to distance himself from Megami in chapter 146, but the target himself protested, oblivious to the sinister plan. This resulted in Megami digging his own grave, as there were major hints that taking over his body was the idea all along. I just can't do it. I can't take this. Oh, Let's look at the first chapter. The title is Ryumin Sukuna, and the first character that we see right after this title is, you guessed it, Megami himself. In fact, the cover page has another detail that most people miss. If we closely look at Megami's Shikigami Toad, we can clearly see Sukuna's face markings on it, which shouldn't be present on the toads. And since I gave you such an excellent easter egg, please can you smash the like button for me and hit the notification bell, as Akatami perfectly ties this into chapter 58's cover page, where we see Sukuna's hands around Megami's body, in contrast to a similar image with Itadori, a symbolic hint that the transference will occur between these two characters. Sukuna needs Megami to reincarnate, as he should be capable of creating a suitable body for him. However, I must remind you that Satoru freaking Gojo did ask Yuji if Sukuna made a binding vow, as Gojo had a bad feeling from the very beginning that something bad was about to occur to the world, which is why he contacted Yuta Akatsu to look after his students if anything happened to him. So once Gojo is unsealed, he won't be as surprised as you think. The conditions of the binding vow were that Sukuna could take over Yuji's body for exactly one minute if he chants and chains. 
Okay. However, during this minute, he could not hurt or kill anyone. Neither us nor Yuji thought about the possibility of Sukuna hurting Yuji himself, as he purposely missed including that in the contract of the binding vow. Ironically enough, Yuji has made such peace with dying from day one that his endless selflessness and not thinking about his own survival has caused this outcome and mistake. Now you may be wondering why am I stating that this was a mistake? Remember, Sathro Gojo in chapter 58 stated to Megami that being a Jujutsu sorcerer is an individual sport, claiming that to die and then win and dying victoriously are two completely different things. Megami, give it your all. It's okay to be selfish. These words of wisdom are perfectly portrayed in chapter 212, as Itadori is not greedy at all. Even till this day, he states he is a cock, claiming his death was a cheap price to pay if Sukuna would go with him in chapter 200. Ironically, this mentality resulted in the worst outcome, as Gojo also stated that Megami doesn't know how to bring out his best. For example, in the baseball game, he rather sacrificed doing a bunt than hitting a home run, therefore making sense of Sukuna's words that he is a wasted treasure. Now since then, the story has come full circle. Sukuna uses Enchain to take the opportunity to imbue his fingers with cursed energy, turning all 15 inside Yuji into one, which creates a super finger for Megami to consume. He knocked out Hana so that she couldn't interfere by nullifying techniques, and since she loves Megami, she would have saved him even at the cost of her life. This worked because technically speaking, Sukuna isn't harming anybody but himself. In response, Megami tried to intervene with his ultimate technique, Maharaga, in a do or die situation, and since he was unconscious in Sukuna's previous battle with it, his decision made complete sense. Unfortunately, as the readers, we know how strong Sukuna was and how easily he dealt with it. Paul George, listen to me when I say this. You are trash. Nonetheless, Megami failed to activate his technique before Sukuna forced him to eat the cursed object he just created. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the moment where we all had a mental breakdown in this community, I'm telling ya. Sukuna knew it was a gamble. As we learned in chapter 1, there's a very low chance that a human body can house his soul, one in a million. But we also learned from Kenjaku that Sukuna can choose his vessels. The the sad thing is, Itadori has the unique ability to take over his body and control it, but Megami doesn't, which can only mean one thing, pure chaos. Megami successfully becomes Sukuna's host, and since the marks under Yuji's eyes have completely disappeared, it's clear that there's no trace of Sukuna in him anymore. This is bad news because Kenjaku painstakingly went through the ordeal to create Yuji as the perfect vessel, by being his mother and making him partly cursed spirit. However, Megami is not capable of doing that, which means Sukuna is free to do as he pleases and even kill whoever he wants in order to torture Megami and Yuji. He has the first target to begin with. As before flying away, the ancient sorcerer Yoruzu, who reincarnated in Sumiki's body, challenged Sukuna to a duel. And what better way to torture his new host Megami than toy around with the life of the only person that matters to him the most, his sister. Him, 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 her, him, him, bodies, 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 bodies. Sukuna's timing flawlessly aligned with Yuji's relief at almost reaching the finish line. Yuji was grateful for being given a role, and his last goal was to keep Megami and his sister safe. With Gojo's unsealing, everything would have been fine in his eyes, but now the little hope that they had has been destroyed. The biggest question you're probably wondering is how will this menace be stopped? Megami and Sukuna's techniques were insanely broken on their own, but Sukuna having free reign over both of them is actually the most dangerous threat the Jujutsu world has faced. Sukuna can tame Maharaga's Shikigami, which no one has been able to do so, and perfect Megami's domain expansion to create infinite clones whilst it is barrierless. 
This compares to Prime Sukuna in the Heian era, a walking calamity as Ryu stated in chapter 181. With Yuji's morale at an all-time low, Sukuna has banked on the fact that he will never be able to bring himself to fight Megami, the person who saved him. Currently, Yuji doesn't have any curse techniques of his own. Gojo stated Yuji had no innate talent for techniques in chapter 12, as 80% of it is due to genetics. But he did claim Yuji can inherit Sukuna's technique eventually. So with Sukuna no longer suppressing Yuji's body, he could develop one as his mother had anti-gravity. Especially since Yuji has already shown talent on par with Nanami, as he matched his Black Flash record in no time at all. And Choso stated Yuji is a demon god in his own right. For example, in chapter 132, Itadori was so talented that the story narrates that no other sorcerer can use the Black Flash at will. But Yuji is so amazing at it that it feels like he is. On top of that, sorcerers who use Black Flash immediately gain an immeasurable higher understanding of the essence of curse energy. Naruto. Choso retrieved the back end of the prison realm from Tengen, but since Akotami hates Gojo so much, his reappearance is delayed again, as Hana is knocked out by Sukuna. So, when Gojo's unsealing finally happens, he will have to come face to face with some extreme harsh realities, like the deaths of Nobara, Principal Yaga, and Nanami. He's barely recovered from the shock of seeing his best friend being possessed by Kenjaku, as a result, this gives Gojo no choice but to execute the curse known as Megami under Jujutsu regulations, a parallel to how Megami had to take a decision in chapter 1. All of this goes back to chapter 117's foreshadowing from Megami's flashback. He remembers his sensei telling him why the Gojo and Zenin clans were on the worst terms. 300 to 400 years ago, the heads of these two clans, who both possessed the same techniques, fought each other to death. Through this anecdote, Gojo wanted his student to understand the vast potential he possessed, that he could even bring him up to the same level of power. The entire fandom wanted a Gojo vs Sukuna showdown, but not in this way, as it looks like Gege Akatami is setting up the ending he declared, that everyone will die. Now whilst we wait for more peak fiction, learn how Gojo and Sukuna achieved enlightenment, which caused is their ultimate clash. Bye-bye.